Hello, welcome to this Getting Started with SharePoint Framework tutorial series. And in this tutorial, we will be actually looking into how you can use SharePoint Framework to create a Microsoft Teams tab. So we're going to basically use SharePoint Framework to create a web part, but not exposing web part as a web part in SharePoint. We're rather going to actually use the web part as a Microsoft Teams tab. So it's not technically then a web part, or it can be exposed as a web part as well. Now, this is, uh, video has been recorded in January 2020, and it's using the SharePoint Framework 1.10 version. Um, if, we, if you're watching this later on and you have a newer version of SharePoint Framework, there might be small adjustments uh, on the video, so please have a look on the documentation, which is always kept the most updated. So videos uh, are updated, but not as, fre as frequently as the documentation. But let's actually get right into it. So let's jump to our Windows 10 uh, test machine, which we're going to use in this tutorial. And let me actually go uh, to my normal location uh, where I'm actually going to use, uh, uh, where I'm going to actually use all of my code. So I have a C uh, code folder. Again, depends on your preference where you want to actually store and create the solutions. And here, uh, let's actually create a team steps folder, uh, move into that team steps folder, and I'm going to clear, the, uh, clear the, the screen. Um, and this is now the, the structure and the folder structure where we can then execute the Yeoman generator for Microsoft SharePoint. So let's actually do that. Let's avoid typos. So uh, the execution is successful and execute the Yeoman generator for SharePoint framework. And we're going to use the default uh, name, uh, which is always taken from the folder, uh, because we are already, um, and we want to target this over on SharePoint uh, Online, because we're creating Microsoft Teams tab on top of uh, the solution being a web part, which is pretty, pretty cool, actually. And we're going to use the current folder, because we already went to the Teams tab folder. And uh, we kind of choose yes uh, in here. Um, typically, when you are creating Microsoft Teams tabs, you would take advantage of this tenant-wide deployment option. So there's no kind of a, uh, let's say, additional thinking on the context, how to make things work in the Microsoft Teams. So technically, you can actually have a web part or an add-in or a tab uh, in Microsoft Teams, which is only targeted to a specific uh, specific team, but not for the whole tenant. But that's a really really technical small nuance. So by default, you would be actually say yes on that one. And in this case, I'm going to not have any unique permissions. So I'm going to say no on that one. We are creating a web part, which is slightly maybe confusing, even though we are actually creating Microsoft Teams tab, but we're actually creating both. So we're looking into potentially changing the terminology here whenever the SharePoint framework will be renamed. Um, the basic experience will remain the same, but since we are no longer just targeting SharePoint, it does make sense to re name SharePoint Framework to be more broadly uh, named. So we're going to create a web part. Let's call that my first uh, Teams tab. And let's uh, do the description as my first uh, Teams uh, teams tab as defined in the documentation. And in this case, we're not going to use any JavaScript framework. So let's choose the no JavaScript framework. We could absolutely extend the solution to use uh, any JavaScript framework in the world uh, after it has been scaffolded as well. But now this is going to take a while. Uh, so let's actually speed up the video. So we'll continue after the scaffolding and the dependencies and everything else have been downloaded from NPM. So we'll be back in one or two seconds. And there we go. Now the solution structure has been scuffled and we are able to have a look on what's actually being created for us. So we didn't actually do any, let's say, specific settings in here. So let's close the welcome. Uh, so the default structure is obviously exactly the same as for the normal web part. But now starting from uh, the Microsoft uh, SharePoint, sorry, SharePoint Server 1.0. Uh, eight recently uh, we actually have now the Teams uh, structure and the Teams folder available in here. And these are basically the files which are relevant uh, and used by the Teams tabs or the Teams application whenever we replicate our solution in the Teams uh, team solution or Teams site. So we'll come back on to that process in a second. But if you want to use some sort of an alternative images uh, for your application uh, or the Teams tab when it's being exposed in the Microsoft Teams, uh, you would update these uh, files. Now, what's important to notice here, the prefix of this file 
is actually matching with the manifest ID of your web part. So if you are updating the file name or the file, uh, please use the exactly the same uh, file and naming. So they will be properly packaged and then uh, properly replicated into the Microsoft Teams site. So it is actually, you can see that the ID uh, manifest ID, the web part manifest ID is actually the one which is being used here. And you could have a multiple web parts obviously uh, and marks multiple tabs uh, in a one uh, SharePoint framework solution. Now, we want this web part actually to be a Microsoft Teams tab. So what does it mean? Well, we have this setting in our manifest file, in the web part manifest file, or we could call this a, a let's say, a panel or a, a component or a control. Um, in this manifest file, well, which is now a web part still, um, we actually have the supported host setting. And supported host settings basically can be used to say, where will this web part be available? So you could actually not expose the web part as a web part in SharePoint. You could only expose uh, the web part also as a Microsoft Teams uh, tab. There we go. Or starting from 1.10 version of SharePoint framework, which is quite a new thing, you can actually target um, the thing as a Teams personal app as well. Now, depending on the, time, on the timing, depending on your tenant setting, everything else, the personal app option might be available for you and or might not be available for you. It really depends, again, when you're watching this video. But personal apps is a relatively new thing uh, announced in Ignite 2019, and it's coming uh, rolling out gradually uh, on the on the uh, Office 365 or Microsoft 365 in the Teams experience. We kind of concentrate today uh, on the fact that we, we can, will have the Teams tabs added in here. And um, I'm going to leave the Teams personal apps option available here. Um, you can have multiple settings. Uh, we could get rid of the SharePoint web part setting in here, but we actually want to test the SharePoint experience for the web part as well. So I'm not going to do that. So let's leave all of those three in. So we're able to see what it means in practice and that this web part is actually a Teams tab, but also a Teams personal app if those settings uh, are already rolled out properly in this tenant as well. Now, let me actually say, save the chair settings, uh, close up the things, uh, so everything is saved. Good. Um, then we actually want our code to be modified slightly. So in the code right now, uh, we are basically just rendering the default output uh, of the web part and saying, welcome to SharePoint. But um, if we're watching this web part in Teams, why would we say that welcome to SharePoint because it's not actually SharePoint. So let's actually modify the render method uh, slightly. Let me actually do the indent here properly for that one, uh, which is a nasty styling issue. And this 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 indention mistake is a nasty styling issue in, in SharePoint Framework 1.10, which definitely is going to be fixed. But let me actually replace the render method completely with uh, the example code which we have on the documentation. Let's have a look on what we're doing here. So this is my first team staff web part. In the render, uh, we just have three variables there and we're checking if the this.context Microsoft Teams has a value. So if it has a value, we know from that that we are actually being hosted in the Microsoft Teams. So we are running in the Microsoft Teams context, and therefore we can actually access Microsoft Teams context and information uh, related on the Microsoft Teams. And that's actually really, really cool. So as um, long as we have the Microsoft Teams context, uh, we can actually access different kind of relevant information around which is relevant for the Microsoft Teams experience. So like channel name or chat ID or local ID. Well, local ID is obviously used in SharePoint as well. Team name, team site URL, team type, team tenant SQ, SQ, SQ um, user and license type. Some of these are overlapping with, with the SharePoint side, but you definitely have this additional level of in, in information on where in the Microsoft Teams you're being actually uh, rendered. Let me actually get that one back to the original, whatever we had. We had the team name visible over there. Good. Now, if that SDK is Microsoft Teams is not set, then we're falling back on the normal SharePoint rendering and we're saying, welcome to SharePoint. So we kind of, we know that we're being hosted in the SharePoint experience. So therefore uh, we render that welcome to SharePoint uh, rendering. And then we can use the normal page context and web and title. So we're going to use the title of the site in where we're being hosted. 
quite simple piece of code and uh, we're not going to make it more difficult within this tutorial uh, the key point is to understand how to access on the context how to package and how to do the settings in the manifest file so that the web part is available as a microsoft teams uh, solution so let actually let me close that one and we are all good to go so only thing what we now need to do is to do the packaging so that was relatively simple and fast so let me actually clear up the table okay uh, to add the console again and let's do the typical thing uh, so call up bundle dash dash ship because I'm not going to do any debunking I'm not going to do any testing um, in my case especially in the tutorial case we know that the code will just magically work um, because well it wasn't that complicated code in first place uh, but in a normal scenario you would do some debugging you would do testing you would verify and all of that iteration but in the case of this simple uh, tutorials we're not gonna actually spend time on that because we know that the code is actually working properly and let's package the solution so we get this spp kg file generated as well in the sharepoint folder which is now generated in here as well so let me again well i could actually go in here and do explorer so we can actually get uh, the explorer view open let me go to the sharepoint folder solution folder and we can see the teams tab over there so now we need to get that one installed to our tenant so let's actually do that so let me go in the browser which wasn't open so let me open up a browser let me go uh, the, the app catalog in this tenant let's go to the apps for sharepoint let's get in the folder structure there's a folder structure track and drop drop it in and make sure that it's available in all of the sites in organization that was the setting which was asked when the yaml generator was executed again and we can see that there's no errors tenant deployed everything is fine and uh, that's really the key understanding is there's any exceptions or errors related on deployment now because we said that the host locations and hosting platform is also not only sharepoint but it's also teams we have now additional options if you go to the files tab and we activate that uh, application you can see the sync to teams button to be available for this uh, solution now just showing the example if i flip to another solution because this solution doesn't have the hosts and defined in the teams that sync is not actually available so if i go here if we click sync to teams we can actually see in here and uh, the status that was it successful or not now in this case, we actually get failed to sync the solution to Teams. And most likely what's gonna happen in here is that that's related on the fact that this is a super new tenant. I haven't even been in Microsoft Teams. So we haven't actually set up the basic structure of Microsoft Teams. Uh, Teams so it will actually fail. But again, depending on your situation, depending on how have you been in the Teams, have you set up the basic structure in your Teams, the situation is slightly different. So let's go to the Teams let's uh, make sure that the teams is up and running let's create a one solution in here we're going to use a web uh, application in here here we go i'm not going to do any notifications we're not interested on that uh yeah bring it together yeah yeah yeah, yeah. teams is fine teams is cool chat is awesome uh, some discussions over there but what I actually want to do, I'm interested on in creating a team. Oh, there's a contents of team is, is created by default. There we go. And uh, just a double check in the situation. If I go also on more apps, uh, I can actually see the app catalog and the team's uh, structure is now valid in the team side. So cool. So now we know that the team's is, is up and running. And we actually completely moved away from the, from the uh, app catalog. So let me actually get back in there so that's one thing to be potentially aware uh, so if you see that sync failing on the right side uh, when you're syncing a, a solution to the teams when you're doing the the files and sync to teams that's one thing to be aware of. so this time what do we actually get successfully synced team solution so uh, this time the whole system is successfully being synced and it takes a while actually the solution to be available in the Microsoft team so there's there's some caching available um, but technically just to recap what was the problem the problem was that this tenant is a tenant where I had not been at all in the Microsoft Teams. So I needed to go there once to make sure that solution structures and my default uh, tabs and default team is available. And after that, the sync to Teams actually worked.
Now, um, related on this one, there might be actually some challenges later on. If you're doing an update, for example, for the solution and you're sync to team again, it will actually fail. So we can actually see that uh, if I do a sync to team one more time, it says fail to sync the solution to teams. And the reason for this one is that the solution already exists in the Teams app catalog. So the SharePoint app catalog is different than the Teams app catalog, and therefore the sync to Teams, it does not by design override the, the Teams, the entry in the Teams app catalog. And yes, we know that the exception should be much more descriptive, uh, so you know about this one. How do we solve that is that we go actually to the Teams site, we refresh, uh, how do I refresh the page? Uh, so let's actually do that. Let's go back in the Teams. And let's go on the on the apps. And after a while, uh, we will well test the caching is still a little impacting that. After a while, we can see the Contoso specific applications in here. And then we go explicitly there and delete the application. And after that, we can again sync the new version to be available in Teams. Not a super optimal situation or an experience, uh, but we're looking into changing that. And it might be depending on when you're watching this video. And this, the experience might have gone slightly better. Exceptions might have been already better. Um, but that's the situation in January 2020 when this video has been uh, updated. Now, what we're gonna do next is that I'm gonna actually refresh uh, this page until we will see the Contoso, well, that was fast, uh, Contoso entry uh, on the left menu. So this one, which says here, build for Contoso, because my tenant's name is Contoso, it is actually now available. And if I click that one, we can see my first Teams tab available. So there was a small delay there um, on getting this available and fully synced uh, on the Teams app catalog, as you noted. So it wasn't there first, we refreshed a few times, now it's available there. And that means that we can actually use it. We can use it from here, or I could actually go to the a team site and any team in the team site, I can just add a tab. Da -da 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 -da. And in here, uh, if I search for, uh, my first team, or we can actually find it from the list of things as well, uh, based on the icon. Um, I can actually select that one. It's gonna ask and add as for additional information, obviously icon metadata. Uh, the metadata, by the way, is coming from the web part properties as well by default. Um, you can technically create your own manifest file for team as well. That's definitely an option, uh, which is being documented in our, in our documentation as well. But in this case, we created and used the sync to teams option where the SharePoint generated the manifest file and the package and took the title and the additional description uh, from the web part properties. And now we're adding this one to the actual team as a own tab. If there's any configuration option, there is actually in this case uh, slightly, um, they will be visible in a second. This is basically just to, to indicate you that, hey, we're adding now this team, it looks good. We're saving that as a new tab on the team and we can actually see the configuration option visible in here. So by default, that's being shown there for the first time, but not after that. You can actually technically control uh, that behavior as well. So if you wanna have that setting available later, we can click um, the tab and settings, and we can actually see the configuration and we are able to configure uh, the web part. And you can actually see the value being actually reflected in here. The key points here you also to notice is that it says, welcome to Teams. So because the context of the web part is telling the web part code that we are in Teams. If we do the same in the, in the uh, SharePoint site, we, because we left the SharePoint host uh, as a valid option and a valid hosting environment, we can actually create this in the, in the SharePoint site. So if I create a page, uh, create a blank page uh, quickly there, uh, let's call this uh, Teams demo. And we can add a web port. And I think we had something related on tab. Yes, my first Teams tab. And there we go. We can actually see the same web port rendered in the SharePoint, but it's actually saying welcome to SharePoint based on the code which we up updated on the on the render uh, method. So quite simple, uh, quite simple thing to follow, quite simple thing to, to manage. And there are certain things like mentioned, uh, the sync to Teams uh, button, 
does fail if the solution already exists uh, in the app catalog in the team side. So that means that you need to actually go to the app section and build for Contoso and delete this one from the teams and then you're able to sync the solution again if you have a newer version. Um, and we also noticed that I need to go teams at least once before the sync to teams actually work in a tenant. So that should be kind of understandable as well um, and easily fixable. Now, one thing we didn't yet test, and I haven't actually double checked the situation in this particular tenant, but if we go to our personal apps, we can in this tenant already see the My First Teams tab. And this is now the personal app and personal apps because once again, in a manifest file, let's go back on, on the solution. In the web part manifest, we said, hey, so let's not only expose this web part as a SharePoint web part or a Teams tab, but also expose that as a Teams personal app, which is again, a new setting in the 1.10 release. We can actually see it in here as a personal app. And that means that if I open it up, it's gonna be opened in the context of the personal application. And that's, that means that the situation is slightly different. Um, let's click, got it, because we are not in the context of team. So that means that the channel and the team name doesn't exist because we are actually running this code in the context of the user as a personal app. And that's why that's gonna actually say undefined. If you go back on the teams and the tab in here, it's actually saying Contoso because in our code, once again, let's go back in the code and have a look on what we're doing here. We are taking a uh, site tab title. We are taking uh, the Microsoft Teams and the team name. But when, again, when you're accessing the, the when you're hosting the, the web part uh, as a personal application, it is not actually in the context of a specific team. It is in the context of a personal application. So it's a slightly different experience. Um, and we are providing additional guidance on all of these settings, uh, definitely in the future, future uh, stages as well. But starting from 1.10, you can actually do personal applications using SharePoint framework. You can actually have multiple tabs, multiple experiences and all of that, uh, use, which is based on the guidance of the personal app implementations in Microsoft Teams. All of that, documented and more guidance will be added uh, as step-by-step uh, step in the future as well. But that's it uh, for this tutorial. Uh, we went slightly further down on the code and explanation uh, in the video rather than just uh, concentrating what was in the documentation, but we stayed pretty much in line uh, on the settings as well. Um, maybe one, one note uh, where we actually did uh, have uh, in the documentation, which we didn't go actually on the video, in the manifest, we can actually set uh, a setting here, uh, which is, let me actually do that. Oop, uh, which is can update configuration. So can update configuration, if I set this one false, it means that we do not have the property pane experience. So if I go back in the teams, if I go back in here, I have the settings and I have that one available. So you can control, do we have this property pane configuration option available by using, and this can update configuration setting, which then from the manifest file will be translated to the auto-generated teams manifest, and then that uh, controls the behavior in teams. And again, you can also manually create your teams manifest files uh, and pointing them to the URLs and which are hosted in SharePoint. But that's already a slightly more advanced topic, uh, which we're going to clarify in the additional documentations. But hopefully that was interesting uh, and thank you for watching the video. Bye-bye.